cool bits. In today's video, I'm gonna give you 11 tips that you should follow if you're using core bits to do large holes through walls. And this will work for everything from inch and a quarter all the way up to mental four inch, 127 mil madness. So I'm gonna show you the tools that I use and the way that I measure up and keep the job safe and amazing. Let's get on, number one. And if you don't subscribe to the channel, do one. So on this job here, on this beautiful job at the moment, they're banging down walls left, right and centre and putting them up left, right and centre as well. It's mayhem. Our little bit to do today is just to get a nice little hole drilled up through this wall here. Um, so the first thing I do is we just have a quick look outside and make sure there's a light, just an outside light that's just sort of down there out of the way. But the first thing I would always say, the number one thing you need to do before you even get your core bits out, get your drill bit out and all the rest of it, is scan the wall and make sure that there's nothing in there that could be a bit naughty. And that's when I use the beast. That is my lovely new toy, my lovely little boss scanner, the Detect 200C. So now I can pop this up here. I know that I'm about to go through this wall. Look at that, we're safe all the way along there. Beautiful, okay, cool. Boom, we're not gonna die. In you go, back into your little net. Always reminds me of Ghostbusters, you know, the, the ghost catcher that you have in it, ghost catcher thing. Next one is uh, dressing the core bit. Now, this might seem pretty obvious if, I mean, this is a brand new, beautiful core bit set from Bosch, gorgeous. Uh, and today, because we're doing an extract for a fan, we're going to be doing that in the 117 millimeter size. But if you do use old core bits, now on these, you can kind of feel the diamonds on the end of them, okay? Um, some people, what they'll do is they'll use these again and again and again. They kind of get clagged up with the silicon that's inside the walls and stuff. What will people often do then is throw the core bits away, thinking that they're were ruined, they don't cut anymore, and there's something wrong with them. The best thing you can do with that is to drill them into a nicer wall where, uh, the way to put it would be like something like a thermalite brick or a, uh, a breeze block brick, and that will redress and take off and almost brighten up the bits again so you can recut them. So if you have got an older set and you don't think they're cutting, don't throw them away just yet. Find out how you can redress them and brighten them up, all right? That's number two. So the next thing is measuring exactly where you want your hole to be, but also use a couple of tools that you may have to make sure that your drill is level like that, going through the wall, but also level like that as well. Good way of doing that is using a laser level. I've got my Bosch Professional GTL 2-50G. And I set it to a cross like that. And then I hide it up here, twist up and level directly on the center of where I want this to be. And that is spot on where I want to go through. If I get my drill bit and I want to know that I'm horizontally going incorrect, then I can actually see the laser come onto the drill bit so I know that I'm exactly horizontal on that, okay? But also from the back, I can line up my drill with the laser point here and then I can get through like that. This tends to only really matter for the first cavity if you're going into a cavity wall because after that, you haven't really got any play up or down anyway because you're in the wall that far with your core drill, getting it all out. Doing it dead reckoning by eye ain't a good idea. Next thing, even though this is not the drill bit that we're gonna be using to go through this wall, I would recommend that you drill a pilot bit so when we come to using the core bit pilot, dust, dust, it goes in a bit easier. Nice little zoom there, Max. So, using what we did a minute ago, Number six, not getting good bits. So if you do buy a new set, because you have to, you haven't bought like a very good set. As you can see here, we've got a lovely set here by Bosch. We've got 38 millimeter, and this is a good idea for you as well to learn your bits and how they work. So we've got 38 millimeter here, uh, which will be inch and a quarter. 52 millimeter here, which you'd use for inch and a half. Now you might be saying, well, hold on, inch and a half pipe isn't that big, it's smaller than that, but you do need clearance around these pipes when you're putting them in walls. And then we've got a 65 mil bit here, which is gonna be used for like <laughs> beautiful urinal pipes, things like that. And then we've got the bit that we're gonna be using today, 117 mil, and then the bit that we've got in here, the 127 mil. This is the dry diamond core bit set from Bosch. So if you wanna get this set, I will leave links to it below if you wanna learn more about it. But you do need to understand what you have in a drill bit set. So we've got, firstly, our two pieces that lock us into our drill, whichever drill we're using. If we're using a standard chuck drill, we use this piece here, this little arbor on here, like that, 
and now our chuck will bite around that and that will be what drives the bit. Or today we're going to be using an SDS bit, so that actually just locks in like so. I'll just show it to you now. And SDS bits will just lock in here like that and we're good to go. The next bit is our pilot drill bit that will be actually going nicely into the bit that we've already done already, nicely guided in. That will go straight into here like so. And then the size of core bit we use will then screw onto this piece here. Later on, when we remove this bit, we use this little angle bit of metal here and we pop that into there like so and then we'll just tap that with a hammer and then that'll allow this to come out again because these can get really, really locked up. Right, so next tip, like I was saying earlier on, when we select which way we're gonna be driving our core bits, right, we need to then pop on a core bit that we're gonna be using. So look at this, we've got a kind of taper in here and then a shoulder on there, and that goes in like so and tightens up, okay? Which is great, that's great, it's fine, but there comes a time when you have to take this apart and sometimes these can be really difficult to get apart. I've come up with an ingenious solution that I haven't actually seen many other people do. So if you do start doing it, ring me up, I've got the patent for it. Get yourself an emergency pack of O-rings and select the O-rings that will be roughly the right size, they look about the right size, and then pop these onto every one of the shoulders of your new set. And that O-ring there will act as like a nice little sponge. It will still drive in perfectly, it will still cut perfectly, but you won't get these locking up all the time when you come to take them apart. And you'll see me not struggling with that later on in this video. I also do that with our extension arm, which is the next bit that we've got in here. Just pop them around on the extension arm and they just stay there. Over time, they do sort of wear away and fall apart, but obviously it's a consumable and I've got loads of those laying around in my box ready for any time when I want to do a bit of kill bit drilling. The next bit is PPE. Now, I love my safe style glasses, they're great, but I do have this integrated uh, glasses jobby, but mask, that's the most important bit. So I will be wearing this later on when it comes to keeping the dust out of my mouth, but there will also be a thing that we're gonna use, dust extraction. But I'll come to that in a sec. Obviously wear a pair of gloves as well, because even if you're using a drill that's safe for this sort of work, they can catch, you can gnash your knuckles up and stuff like that. So make sure you do that as well, and you should be fine. Right, so let's build the beast up. So in goes our, I'm just gonna try and get a little bit of that on there. Get a greasy grease. In goes our pilot bit. On goes our drill, and just look at that biting up nicely on my little o-ring there. That will hopefully prevent us from getting too tight. And then into our SDS drill. Now, this is a massively important point. Don't know what number it is now. We've done so many, you're getting so much help on this video. Use a drill with a clutch on it and also make sure it's going in the right direction. This is the right direction. You ain't gonna wanna be going that fast, I'll tell you that now. Right then, so we've got that done, we've got that done, we're about to put our PPE on. Are we ready to drill yet? No, we're not. Because we haven't used dust extraction, as they say in Italia. Oh. Get a bit of dust extraction on the go. Even if it's your mate stood underneath with a hoover just out of the way, not getting killed or anything like that. But we're lucky today, aren't we? Because I've got me massive Bosch Hoover and also a lovely little addition to the kit as well. Check this out. So this is the Bosch Professional GDE 162. Got a massive, massive hoover here. This thing sucks like anything. But you turn it on and you'll be able to hear me in a sec, hopefully. And this will actually suck it to the wall. So now any dust that we make will get sucked straight into the hoover and not into the room. Right, let's get dwelling. Right, so the last little bit of advice I wanna give you when it comes to doing this sort of job is to not push too hard. Do not use hammer, don't push too hard. If you do that, you're gonna knacker the bits, they're not gonna like you for it, and you're gonna end up with trouble on your hands, all right? Take it easy, I think that's probably it. You don't have to push hard, your drill doesn't have to be going around at a million RPM. 
just go nice and easy, take your time. If this job takes half an hour or an hour and you can do it safely, then great. And after a while, the more practice you get in doing it, the better you'll get at doing it and you'll be able to do it a little bit quicker. But doing it safely and accurately is the aim of the game. Right, Max, there's no dust coming out, mate, so I don't even need to use this. I'm just gonna use my safety goggles. With that, we get zero dust. It's brilliant. Another little tip is clear out regularly, if you can. Honestly, how good is that? The way that's cut through those bathroom tiles there, absolutely sweet as a nut. Uh, but then obviously you want to take them apart every so often. It makes it a bit easier if you just take it off your drill, if you like. So then you've got your piece like that. What you can do, some bits will have a hole in the back that you can knock it out. But I don't tend to use that. And I always make sure that I use adjustables. But these, because of what I told you earlier on, should come apart nice and easy. Look at that. Easy as you like, no trouble at all. And then once we've got that off, I just want to show you how nice this cut is. I'm well impressed with this. Yeah, sweet. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. Really, really good cut there. And that is like the hardest material you could ever go through, pretty much, tiles. Right, let's continue with our journey through this brick wall. Going nice and easy, not going hard at all. Nice light bit of forward pressure, but look, the drill is going around at a nice, like, probably 300 RPM, something like that. That is so lucky, mate. Caught right. a roof tag. Right. Because it's plumber pass. You know, we always try and give you a couple of little extra tips, especially when you sort of find things along the way. I was hoping this wouldn't happen, but for you as the viewers, I was hoping it would happen as well, because it's good to know this sort of thing. But a lot of buildings, when we've got a cavity, internal cavity, um, internal skin, sorry, and then an outer skin, uh, they can be held together with little metal tags that the bricklayers put in when they're doing the brickwork. And we've got one just in there. Now, sometimes we, we did scan the wall, but it's such a small, small piece of metal and it's so far away. Uh, sometimes it's difficult for scanners to pick that up, especially going through tile. But when you get to them, the, the way to negate the chance of it happening, it's a little, there's a small chance it can happen and it's happened to us today, so it does happen, is when you're getting through and you think you're getting down to that end part of, uh, of coming through that first bit of the cavity, is just to go easy. And if you feel the drill, just catch on anything, stop straight away, get in there with a the hammer and chisel and clear it out a little bit and then you've got to work on getting out that tie, which can be a bit of a bum, and we're gonna to have to do that now. Bend them so much, they'll come off almost like a nail, but this one ain't doing that on, mate. It's right up there. <laughs> now that we've got uh, the main bit done, we don't really need the core bit anymore. So we can take out our center drill. Yes! <laughs> it's becoming a joke now, isn't it? Oh dear, it's good. Um, so sometimes what you'll find as well, when you're digging into a cavity, the cavity is deeper than your actual core bit. So what you need to do then in that case is get in there with a hammer and chisel and chisel out that core bit, break it down, take those bits out so then you can continue to carry on cutting. The ways you'll know that is sometimes you'll just see on the inside of the core bit that it's gone shiny right at the back of it or you'll see that, like a mark on the center point of the brick that you're drilling, or you're just not going anywhere. You're like, well, well what's going on here? Do you know what I mean? And, uh, but in the end, you'll get through. Just price up here. Yeah! All in all, honestly, if we hadn't been filming this, this whole job would have taken us 10 minutes. That's how quick this was to just razz through that. Even, I mean, well impressed that the fact that we've managed to go through a hole in a wall with a massive core bit using a battery drill. Bosh, well done. Look at how nice and neat that hole is. You know, I'm almost tempted to lay my bubble in the bottom of it and see if it, you know, you can see it all the way through. So look, if you follow that line, that line all the way through there, it's pretty much center line, the whole of that hole all the way. 
So we know we've got a line that's horizontal, nice and, you know, nice. I would say as well, it's quite handy to have that kind of technique if you wanted to get a slight drop. So say you were doing something like a, a soil pipe going through twin cavity wall, then you could do that and just cock it up a little bit and then try and get a little bit of a drop on that as well. But yeah, really, really impressed with that. Look at that. I'm gonna buy a lottery ticket today. That is so lucky. <laughs> But it's unlucky, but it's really lucky at the same time. Look at that. That's what those O-rings do. Honestly, guys, one of the best tips you're ever going to get here on Plumber Parts. The other one being, don't have that last beer. Because if you start asking yourself the question whether you should have it or not, you know the answer. If you enjoyed today's video, guys, then I think you're going to enjoy this video just here. This is an epic beast of Plumber Parts proportionis. It's great, click on that now. And also if this video has helped you out, then please click the subscribe button as well, because that's the least you can do, you lazy, lazy YouTube viewer. See you soon guys, old Jack.